events. it is actually a story of a of, of a of a friend and it really spoke to me so much but and i really felt i had to say this story i had to tell this story to the world and uh, it is different in a way that um it is about a, uh, a psychological disorder that it's never been covered in films as far as i know at least in tamil films uh, i have not seen a movie which talks about narcissistic personality disorder uh in our about social uh, sociopaths yeah. so we have we've seen psychopaths you've seen anni and all those type of movies but you've not seen a, a movie about these people who stay very well among us and they're one among us and one among the society that very highly placed in society but at the same time they have this very dark side within them and uh, that is that is what is very disturbing to me and if uh, somebody watches this series they might actually uncover a lot of people who are in their lives who have this sort of a tendency if not this complete disorder who have narcissistic tendencies okay. and they can uh, when i uh, when i was researching for this story i learned that someone in my own life had this tendency and i was a victim of that and uh, that actually put a lot of light on wh- why i was going through such a bad time so i want somebody a wife or a, an or somebody who is go- undergoing this torture or mental trauma to be like okay this is what i'm going through and i have to seek help i have to get out of this relationship okay so that is the main crux of this story and if any one a woman who is uh, in a bad marriage like this who is uh, married to an narcissist or a sociopath gets out of this uh, because of this or yeah, feels that feels enlightened okay i am going through this i am going through what maithili is going through her character's name is maithili if I, uh, so if even one woman comes forth like that i'll be i my mission will be successful so to just reinforce what amit has been saying um how common a disorder this is it's something that happened in my life just two months before i heard this story before amit came to me with the story a very very close friend of mine comes to me with almost the same sequence of events okay. so this has happened in her life all right so apart from the fact that it's a great script it's a great story and i fell in love with it almost immediately one of the main reasons that i chose this was of course this friend of mine so this is some and after she came and narrated the story to me there was we just couldn't understand what was going through her husband's mind you know right. so um after we did a bit of research we did narrow down on a few i mean it's just uh, between friends we were doing our so called research but we did narrow down on a few uh, disorders which you know we thought were uh, would be the problem there then amit comes to me with the script and all the sequence of events that he's narrated in this was exactly the same that happened in her life yeah it is almost like it, it, it they follow a pattern and they, uh, especially people who have this disorder full blown disorder there is always a spectrum where narcissists uh, like the uh, you have narcissistic tendencies but if you have the disorder it's full full blown sociopathy they need help but obviously they're not going to take help that's a different matter but um, uh, so it's like they follow a particular pattern uh, they do this they start out with um, being very nice to a, a person mm-hmm. they are victim they are very nice they they are full of love and they and they keep uh, appreciating what they do however small it may be and then slowly they start they start chipping away at their confidence 
they say no i don't like this i don't it's not that nice no this is nice but this is not not nice and then they keep uh, poking holes at whatever they do the smallest of things if you cook something even if there is proper salt you said you not added salt so things like that and they make them doubt themselves and fe- and and at one point these people these victims they feel that they're going crazy so to that extent they play with their minds they manipulate them they emotionally traumatize them so it is very serious but it never comes to the fore because they don't even know that they are undergoing this sort of a torture so you recall personal experiences and uh, how did you know that such a such a thing was going on and you know sometimes victims will never understand what's going on exactly. because they'll, they'll constantly feel like it's their fault yeah, yeah, exactly. that's 90% happens in all relationships yeah. so what's that one spark that made you realize that okay this is not right this is not the format that is supposed to happen how did you come to no no because of my, i was told the story she was telling me what happened in her life okay. and then she realized uh, her husband was a social uh, was a sociopath was a narcissist and that's when she was telling me that he does this he does that he does this this is how you used to you make me feel so bad and i realized that in my childhood there was a, uh, a similar situation with me but uh, that was not as uh, severe because i had my parents support and i had but uh, most of these women who get into these marriages with these sociopaths they don't have a support system they don't have and they completely are uh, estranged from their from their parents that they are probably taken to a different land they, they move from uh, maybe uh, chennai to singapore or malaysia and they have no one there so they're only if they need support they have to cling to their husband they they're not allowed to have friends if you have why do you want to go out with them they're, they're not uh, they're going to uh, change you they're going to they go yeah exactly control is the word and control correct me, is the word correct me if i'm wrong but uh, they they pick the, the targets that mm. they pick are not, not the strongest people okay you know yes. Yes. they they are weaker okay. weaker in terms of not physically or things they probably had something um, something in their childhood you know that's affected them because of which they um, they need constant support so their constant support is pro- their spouse constant and validation constant yeah. validation so that is their spouse and i according to me i think that everyone has a breaking point mm-hmm. so however weak you are mm-hmm. at a point where you feel like you're losing yourself that's where you start taking action it could that action could be anything it could be suicide or it could be revenge. getting out revenge. Revenge. revenge revenge in maithili's case in in uh, this story in dalo's diaries it is revenge beyond a particular point she says i'm not going to take the abuse that has been heaped over me by everyone in my life and i'm going to hit back and that's when it uh, she begins to plot her revenge against sanjay sanjay is my okay hand. so this is a revenge story yes, yes. In the yes. second half it is a revenge story. story so how much of a health experts advice or inputs were given when you were doing your basic research since considering this is based on psychological um, yeah i took a lot of uh, advice see i i did a lot of research on online i did a lot of reading okay. uh, i went and read a lot of books about this disorder and uh, i was i didn't have access to that many medical professionals who are therapists or uh, you know psychiatrists to help me with this but uh, I, i most of my research research was online but and uh, tell you how strong his script was okay. after amit narrated this script to me i did go visit um a psychologist psychiatrist and um so without me narrating the script to him mm-hmm. he narrated every little thing that is there in the script okay every little thing that you can see in sanjay's character right. you know okay for maithili you can see that she is going through a lot but for sanjay it is it, it's um you know the small things you know the small mm. reactions mm. which is very very crucial for this mm. which you really need to watch okay you know okay. so the first few episodes you'll be like hey he's a normal guy but then there is so much that's going through sanjay's and also amit's mind when he was doing this okay. so the research that he said he did um initially before i came into this project if another reason i took it up was because i i figured that he had done like so he he had like so much of a research that you know that backed right. him up so i come back and i tell him listen listen i met this guy and he okay. said that you know these are the things and amit had more to add okay. to it okay. so as a he's a right he's a writer as well so as the writer i think he's done a lot of research for and i i wanted to uh, give it from the the victim's perspective it is from it is maithili's story mm. 
and i didn't want to uh, get too caught up in the details of uh, what this social uh, this sociopath uh, behavior is like or this borderline personality disorder if i get too into the details then it's going to disengage the audience mm. the audience is going to be like okay i don't want a lesson i'm not it's sitting here watching, watching a documentary it's, yeah. not, I'm, it's, it's not, not a documentary, documentary. It's not, i'm not like trying to preach, preach here. here so i i want it to be entertaining at the same time educating but educating not in the way well, oh, i'm feeling educated no right. you just have to feel, feel what is happening the clarity of thought and maybe uh and take home something from this and keep away from such relationship mm-hmm. and from such people who inflict such relationships upon this uh, this very weak willed individuals does the character help you move away from the abuser in the show uh in, uh, in the show sure. and like i'm not i'm the okay. abuser okay yeah. <laughs> yeah i play the abuser i play yeah. sanjay her husband right. so in the beginning as she said this uh, sanjay is a very sweet uh, very highly achieved uh, very you know successful guy and you uh, as an audience you would be watching it and you would feel like oh my god maithri so happy so lucky to have uh, sanjay and then you slowly start to see what maithri says something's wrong something's wrong he's he's con- and you sometimes you side with sanjay sometimes you side with maithri so most of the time in the beginning you side with sanjay why is maithili being so not, not receptive she is not you no know, why is she being uh, not the perfect wife for sanjay but then we see that this fellow is making the audience also feel as horrible as he feels okay. uh, he makes uh, uh, maithili feel right. and then we see the whole transformation of maithili and then finally she she plots her revenge she gets her revenge but at what cost Okay. And, uh, so do you do you still feel the same for Maithili at the end of the show? Mm. We don't know. Yeah. That is that is ev- an audience perspective. In the, in yeah. every revenge story, it is obvious that she is going to get her revenge. But uh, how is in, the in, uh, story? Yeah, but when you have to take revenge against someone, you have to yeah. actually imbibe their personality, mm. imbibe their qualities. If that per- if you want to defeat your enemy, you have to be stronger than your enemy. Right. And the only way she can be stronger than her enemy is to. let go of all the sweet and the, all the the that beautiful personality that she has inside that the, the, uh, the very kind compassionate nature she has to leave all that and become a sociopath like sanjay okay right only then will she be able to defeat him right right because what sanjay is willing to do to defeat maithili maithili will not be willing to do hmm. the old maithili hmm. so she has to become the new maithili who is devoid of compassion who is devoid of empathy and is only focused on defeating and so destroying like, uh, something like gone girl <laughs> uh I'm not gonna... as methodical as gone girl okay. because uh, she has she is a full blown psycho yeah, yeah, psycho yeah. she knows what she is doing she takes yeah. she is uh, she is so methodical in yeah. her approach but she she just now real uh, realizing, realizing her uh, her crazy side okay and she is maybe so gone girl the uh, things uh, that maithili does surprises maithili itself okay you know she is like oh How, how did this? i do something yeah. like this you know how was i so devoid of uh, empathy like she is somebody who even in the worst of situations she will help somebody out mm. if she is going through a traumatic uh, period she'll still stop and help someone out mm. but in the end she is she is completely changed so now i heard about your roles i heard about your series now let's come to how you both ventured into web series You're popularly known as Vikram in Ninja Malpadilai, so you have a huge fan following. Thank you. So many people watch your program. So somebody who's doing a regular soap opera on TV, how did he get the spark? You know, let's venture to web series. You know, let me do something. Let me put forth my idea. Did you have apprehensions about how your audience will perceive you later? I wanted them to have. Uh, I, I wanted to have an apprehension as to how they would perceive me because I don't. I'm not very comfortable with the way I'm being perceived right now. Okay. I'm being. I I feel like I'm feeling getting very comfortable, like in this whole hero role where everyone's you know. Kalyan Mudal Kadal very good. Nalla Kanavan Nalla. Ah, it's it it got really boring for okay. me. I I like to challenge myself when it comes to roles. I want to keep doing something constantly different and the try and I'm very, I'm I'm very attracted to. bad characters or you know bad mm-hmm. people uh, on screen or villains and all that i really love such characters i feel they have a lot of depth and they are the ones who actually make the the story interesting okay. uh, obviously the protagonist has to defeat the villain i don't i don't mind i as long as i get to challenge myself as an actor constantly i am fine 
So I want my vision, my the perception of okay. Amit to change. So you don't want Mr. Goody to show no. anymore. No, yeah, it's kind of boring. For a brief time. For a brief time. Really, yeah. Interestingly, another actor had recently said that every actor dreams of doing a negative role at least once in their yeah, career. Absolutely. And uh, so I think. I d- I dream to do it a lot more than once. <laughs> okay. I have something to add in this. All right. So um, yeah, I'm I'm from Kerala. So yeah. I've, I I. I don't watch Tamil serials, but um, I mean it's not because I'm from Kerala. But um, <laughs> anyway, but um, so when the uh, so I've just seen Amit as Sanjay, and of course Amit, who's a nice guy, oh, by the way. <laughs> but um, the other day I happened to watch Ninja Marpadilla. Okay. I I watched one episode of it, and I just couldn't recognize it. I absolutely <laughs> couldn't recognize. it. Yeah, I was like, no, that's that's not Sanjay. <laughs> but that shows his range as an actor. Thank you. <laughs> so so kind. Mm-hmm. And I actually we have I've searched for Maithili for probably four to five months easily. I was constantly in the search because I was so folk. I was so particular about the sort of look I wanted, the sort of performer I wanted. Okay. And uh, so, what was the what were you looking for in this character? I wanted a sense fasting. of vulnerability. Okay. But at the same time, I want. This character is extremely difficult to pull. Okay. It is. Uh, I feel as an actor, if I if someone can pull this off, it is going to increase their range and also show their range to the world because she is this really soft-spoken uh, girl, but she t- transforms into something that she never imagined. The audience could never imagine. Okay. The audience can never imagine seeing Maithili if you see the first two or three episodes and then you see the last three episodes. It was like, who is this girl? It's like completely different. And I wanted somebody who could embody the change, who could bring the change into their body, into their face and look different by the end. Yeah, yeah. And that, uh, I was not sure whether Shruti could do it because I'd never seen her work. Okay. She sent me an audition, I loved it. Okay. But uh, audition cannot be a very good judge because it's just one scene. Mm. But she, uh, if not for her, this, this uh, series would not have come out even half as well as it has. It's come out really well, uh, and I because I I made it so I feel a little towards it. But I'm sure if you watch it, you will also be impressed. Or I'm sure the audience will be impressed, especially with Shruti's acting. There have been times when I felt like, what the hell? She's can she's going to get overtake me. I'm okay. I have to I have to step up again. I have to do I have to do better in my, in my scene. But as a creator, as a producer, and as a writer, I was so happy seeing her, uh, who completely imbibing Maithili. And uh, and not and not shifting from the focus at all, and that sort of focus I have not seen in any other actress I've worked with uh, so far. So it was a I pleasure. I played this boy well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Shruti, coming to you. You hail from Kerala, yes. and uh, you have a degree in architecture. Yes. Yeah. So recently we just heard that uh, your ad is got very popular oh my good lord it's got very popular oh. <laughs> so there's a so when we went to um, tirunelveli we were shooting in tirunelveli so i i not told anyone about okay. i mean no one knew about this ad and uh, so we go there and I'm, I'm getting picked up so the driver he's like madam i mean i'm not talking about the company <laughs> ma'am you're the one who acted in that mangaldeep ad so i said yeah uh, anger a poster is there madam outside the school and then like they've not uh, they, they made so much fun of me i just wished uh, the they ground beneath you. me you thought it was fun huh? they were praising you i don't know amit was not praising me <laughs> okay. i we don't praise each other to our faces okay. it's always in interviews like this or behind our backs <laughs> <like this. laughs> in front no, of each other we are always you know uh, you know insulting each other that's <laughs> fun no, So considering your background and uh, then your transition into ads how did movies happen how did movies like uh, say chanakya tantram and ritam how did these movies happen so movies happen first okay uh, so my um, the director of my first movie which was nyan he saw me in dance class and okay. he asked me if i'd want to act okay he said it's with dulkar i said why not <laughs> and no so then uh, that mo- the fir- <laughs> so the the first movie happened in that fashion um but then after that um i i want to study a little more so then okay. then um after my masters is when the actor and producer of pradham mr jay surya saw me somewhere and he's like you look uh, <laughs> like you could do this role <laughs> and uh, then pradham happened but with pradham uh, 
Pradham was the movie that um, made me passionate about mm. cinema, about acting. Not and about prior acting. Prior to that? Huh? Prior to that? Prior to that, Nyan. It, okay. um, I went into onto the sets of Nyan as a mere audience. Okay. So it was not like I knew anything about cinema right. or acting. So um, I just went there. I was the audience who would watch a movie and would very easily say, oh, this is not very nice, without thinking of the amount of effort that right. goes behind cinema. So Nyan is a movie which taught me that mm. cinema is more than what you just, just the output. There's right. so much of effort that goes behind it. So Nyan taught me how to appreciate cinema and Pradham taught me how to enjoy it. <laughs> okay, Roger. Um, do you think web series is the future? Of course. Um, uh, it is definitely the future, but it's a part of the future. I won't say that it's going to take over everything that is... Uh, cinema will be cinema. Absolutely. Cinema, yeah. TV will still be TV. TV will be TV. People are still going to want to watch Vikram than Sanjay. That is, I, I completely agree to that. I completely accept that possibility. But web series is just going to be another means of communication, right. means of uh, entertaining the, the people. It's not going to be entertaining the masses anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Because the sort of content that we have now, like, like uh, people now are watching TV serials and are very satisfied with that. So in order for them to get used to better quality content, which or you know, I won't, I won't call it better quality because quality is very subjective. I would call it something which is you, you make, you, do, you use more money to make. Like, uh, bit, I, I feel that now web series is between films and. Uh, and TV. But don't you think the target audience is different? Yeah, target audience is completely You're different. Yeah. yeah, target audience is completely different. Uh, one thing about uh, web series is that it, it lasts for a longer time. TV, you watch today's episode and you pretty much forget about it the next day or the next two days. Right. What happened in Kalanamudal Kadal Varai, people don't remember all that much. They just remember Arjun and uh, Priya mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, and uh, whatever. Uh, apart from that, but I feel web series will be uh, people will watch again and again and again. Mm -hmm. So that is one very important feature of which web series which people will enjoy. Which is accessibility. Right? Yeah, accessibility. Mm -hmm. right, right. And repeat audience for that. You say that uh, serials they won't recall you much? No, no, serials, I am saying that the episodes won't be uh, won't be in people's mind for a long time. people's mind, but the character will last. Character will last, okay. if it's a good serial. But even that also, beyond, uh, after a particular time, it will start to fade because there's so much new content constantly coming. Yeah. You you won't remember what article came in uh, in you know 2018, 2017 newspaper. No? Mm -hmm. It's pretty much like a newspaper. Your daily dose of entertainment. Right. But this is going to I feel last for a longer time. This is more like a impression? yeah. It creates an impression. It's more like a magazine. A, a, you know, like a monthly magazine or a. Or a or a bi-monthly magazine where you you get one issue and you read a really good article and you remember it and then you and uh, it's sometimes referred to again and again so it's I feel that that's how you can make a different differentiation movie is like a book um, uh, uh, web series is like a, a magazine okay. and um, uh, daily soap is uh, newspaper. newspaper wow <laughs> okay swati <laughs> Alright, okay. And when is your web series out? When can we expect it? Hopefully in September. And the platform? Platform, we are uh, looking at different platforms. There are quite a few platforms right. interested right yeah. now. So we are uh, we want to sh we want to see the best platform mm -hmm. which is, which would tell the story or you know mostly a lot of subscribers and a lot of viewers. Only then will the product actually reach yeah. a lot of lot more people. So I'm, I'm looking at the best platform for that. So I'm trying to see. All right. Uh, once the edit is done, then I'll have more clarity as to you know which would be the best best platform to showcase Dollar Diaries. We're looking forward to watching your show after mm. hearing so much about it. Thank you. So thank you so much for your time, Amit. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> looking forward to watching you on screen. So. Yes. We'll let you know. On after screen. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs>